Okay, Scott. Let's get us some finger cots. Those are really important. Uh, but let's look at this. God, what a beautiful watch. Another one. God, what a winner. Jeez, this is nice. Yeah. Isn't that pretty? Jeez, oh, God, it looks like it's so clean. Look at the, look at that. I mean, it, this did not have very many miles of use either. Good taste in watches there, buddy. Uh, one thing I do notice, you see that sort of iridescence right there? That is, um, it's not a big deal, but what this is, is when watches are really old, uh, in terms of seals, the seals don't really effectively work anymore. If any amount of, sorry for the bumping, any amount of moisture gets in, uh, it can pick up old lubrication and then it will, it can condense on the underside of the crystal, which is what we had here, and it leaves the old oil there. So that's what I'm going to deal with and we're going to take it apart. So she's a runner. That's not a surprise. Okay, let me uh, start taking this thing apart. Hang on. Okay, so let's get into it. Uh, well, actually, I'm talking at a watch, but I'm talking to people watching my video. No, I didn't tell you I was filming. Wow, that's so clean. Yeah, it's a. This is a. This is an early non sua. This is was made the summer that they started really producing there. I think a lot of these were made with um, parts that had previously been made in Japan and shipped down there. That's that's what my Hong Kong sua, which was the same exact time period. That's what that thing was. It said assembled in Hong Kong of Japanese parts. So this looks to me like that, especially considering it has what I consider an early style um, rotating ring bezel with the smaller little dimpled cutouts. So you can see more of the pattern of the two circular ridges that get machined out. So I bet you that's exactly what it is. That this one is like mine. Assembled in Hong Kong, Japanese parts. That's just a guess, but you never know. What a beautiful watch, anyway. <clears throat> uh, you know what, honey? It's my world. What? It's my world. I'll home if I want. I don't care, honey. I told people that if that's what they wanted to take the time to write and complain about, that they can do it elsewhere. Yeah, okay, this thing is on. Wow, hold on. Okay, I've got the beautiful rotating ring off. There's the original gasket in there, and you can see the original loom and the original dust. There's more of that original dust. It's right there. Case is looking good. Got a little bit of corrosion there, but nothing major. Click ball is standing nice and proud. It hasn't popped out of the. Uh, it hasn't popped out of the case. That is some serious spring action. If you're ever pulling off this bezel in the future, when you pull it off have the watch over something like a bowl. This this is the furthest out of one of these click balls I've seen without it being actually out of the watch. And these have a tendency to come out. I mean, if it does, it's fine. You just put it back in and click it on and it'll be cool, but just something to think out. Think about. This watch did not want to open. I had to, I had to, you know, good thing I have a bench mounted case back tool. Big Bertha. Oh, I mean, so this watch, as far as I can tell, hasn't been opened since 
1981. Mm -hmm. Wow, God, I cannot believe that thing was so hard to open, and yet, wow, look at that, it's just stuck. Wow, 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 look at that. Jeez. Yeah, Lower Main Spring Arbor Port is badly worn, which is amazing. Isn't that amazing? This watch is almost brand new. Look look at this screw head. Yeah, I mean, look at the look at the top of uh, the screw head here. That's the top of the arbor, right? And so we go, we move that, and you can see the whole arbor is shifting back and forth. Everything's moving around. Okay. But that's real interesting. Um, I am looking forward to seeing that lower mainspring arbor. Okay, let's let's do this. Let's start doing it. That uh, sure is pretty though. Mm-hmm. Sure is pretty. Okay. Come on, come on. Whoa, whoa. Man alive. They really were firming stuff down this day in the pack factory. Well, you know, maybe they had just opened up the SUA, the I'm sorry, the Hong Kong line, and everyone was bright eyed and bushy tailed and just making sure everything was just Spick and span. Mm -hmm. Pretty. Oh my God, how did the dog get in here? Hang on. Okay, I got the dog evicted. Yeah, look at that. Look at the oil on there. What the heck? Huh. See, that doesn't help us at all. That That is, somebody over-oiled the, this setup, this getup, and the, there was so much of it that it leaked out onto the, the plate. Wow, was it like this from the factory? Jeez. Man, and you got actually a fair amount of grook inside your, uh, around this too. Hey, sorry for the noise. Wow. Yeah, I'm getting a lot of stuff out here. Something, there must have been just enough moisture in that it, um, that it, it was able to pull lubrication from a bunch of different places. And you get a mix of lubrication and water and rust. Wow. Ah, that's what I was looking for, emulsion. Okay. 
Um, let's see. So last thing I'm going to do is I want to pull, pull that. Die shock sit. Uh, hang on a second. One second. Okay, so if your balance out looks okay. Interesting, though, underneath the balance, whoever or whatever was assembling this movement was scratching the main plate. But it was hidden. It's hidden by the balance cock, so doesn't not that big of a deal. So let's see what kind of stuff. This is the underside of the oscillating framework with ball bearing. This is the and this is the underside of the uh, winding bridge. That is the pin or the post for the pull lever. So let's see. Yikes! Nice. Yeah, because what can happen with these is that the water gets in and it'll, 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 in moisture form, it'll draw to the crystal or the case back. Uh, it'll sit under here and then it mixes with the oil and then it starts to rust and then it keeps moving and then you get this like water absorbent abrasive slurry and it can eat that, uh, eat that thing alive. <clears throat> That is some dirt. Uh, everything's intact. You still have your stemmerist washer. God, that's a lot of oil on this. Huh, that's crazy. Now let's flip it over and look at the glory. This is the this is the fun part. Yeah, there's just a lot of oil, like weird, dirty oil. Wait, that's the... Okay, so let me then do this. Wow, is that pretty? The text is, is a little faded. I'm trying to feel if that uh, can opinion center wheel has a little bit of resistance. I'm, it doesn't necessarily feel bad. I'm probably going to have to tighten that up. Well, this loom is completely original. <clears throat> Don't stop that. Mm-hmm. Okay. All right. You know, honey, that's what I could do. Stop humming, I could just start singing. It's true. I could. I do have a lovely voice. I am I was professionally trained. Professionally trained. Oh come on. Come on. Okay, move. There we go. Let me get these things off here. Hang on a second. I want to be running. And there's your dial. Absolutely original. Absolutely correct for a Hong Kong, and also correct for Hong Kong, dial is undated. They stopped doing that. And you'll notice it's a slightly different loom formulation than what they were using in, um, when everything's still being made in Japan, it's not as puffy. But it's perfect. So we're just gonna leave that alone. Put that on the little Persian dial holder. Uh, I'm gonna start taking your Moving apart here in a second, but first I want to do the last of the dirty things and pull this crystal. How is your crystal? Gosh, it's only got a couple tiny marks. I, I wouldn't I wouldn't change it. I'll just clean it and put it back in. Unless you really, really want a new one. I don't think there's any need for that. 
yeah, this is the original crystal that ring. Uh, really had a nice solid grip on this case. It's the, 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 the it's I'd, I'd be willing to to wager that I'm the first person to pull this ring out of here since it got put in. They normally don't fight this much there. Gosh. Okay. Oh yeah, it went in the ocean and then it didn't get cleaned. Okay, so we're gonna have some pitting inside this. It shouldn't be deadly as long as it doesn't blow all the way through or crack it. Because what happens with the rust, it grows underneath and it swells up. It takes up more room than the original steel it's replacing. I'm gonna have to, and what can happen then is it can go and it'll, it can crack. Yeah, the metal is definitely stretched right there. See the rust and then right there on the edge, see that? I'm gonna have to look at that real close. This ring might be, no bueno, might be bad. That is why when you're done with your Seiko dive watch that has good seals, and you've been in the ocean, you're supposed to put it in a glass of water to leach out the salt. Otherwise, the salt will sit there and even stainless steel will rust. You give it enough of an incentive to. Okay. Yeah. Mm, crystal is good. It's definitely got some rust on it, which I'm going to have to deal with. Uh, seal support ring is fine. Okay, that's good. Um, and our all-important chapter ring. Nah, it looks fine. Okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's a that's a good amount of pitting in there. That really is. That's a lot of rust. Right in that spot. So what I'm going to do is I'll clean. I'm going to clean out the rust manually. Uh, and then I'm going to use a series of chemicals on it to get rid of the bulk of it. And then the final cleaning cycles uh, convert anything that's left to hematite. And that is the, should be the end of that story. Your crown threads look good, I think. I think. But I'll check your, I'll, I'll, I'll check it. Don't you worry about that. The crown tube is beautiful. Bottom ceiling surface is Fine. What in the heck is, is that some kind of oil or something? Some kind of grease? Yeah, it's some kind of like old dried case back stuff, huh? Okay, yeah, there's more. More of that rust. Okay, I will get in there and I will clean that out. You betcha. Okay, so now it is time to, uh, I'm going to stop and clean that stuff and then clean this up and then take that movement away. So now it is time to see the <sighs> wheels and lower mainspring arc report. That ought to be just lots of fun. do this first. Let's pull this. I want to see how the train runs. Nothing to do with this, um, something, something else. Come on, faces, show me what you got. Okay. Mm 
Mm-hmm. Yeah, oh, good, good, fine. Fine. I was looking to see if the lines that were across the faces of the palette stones were old lubricant or a giant worn channel, and it was lubricant. And that's a good thing. Sounds pretty quiet. Yeah, the, the 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 whole the whole barrel is up. I can see it, um, and it's as high as it can go on those threads. It's running pretty smooth though so far. It's delivering pretty smooth, slow power. Yeah, that well, looks okay to me. Mm. Yeah, we got some, this thing is lashing around like that. Yeah, okay. Well, so we might be looking at a uh, fourth wheel. Uh, definitely we're going to be jeweling this. I'd be shocked if I didn't have to. Yeah, it looks so that the third wheel looks okay. Wow, yes. Holy cow. That's gotta be one of the firmest firm down screws I've seen out of a Seiko in a really long time. Holy cow. Normally they're always either loose or they're tight to the same amount. That one would really crank down. Wild. Mm -hmm. Got us some, that's the S2 coming out there. That's the mainspring lubricant. What is it? It's molybdenum or something? What do I know? Come on, you. Yeah, there's more of that, more of that uh, dried lubricant on the underside. Mm, looks like you're, yeah, look at that, that upper bushing is actually really worn. Isn't that wild? It's got a big old channel worn in it. I wonder how that happened. How strange. Hmm. Okay, so let's do that. Click out. It's weird. Oh, wow, well, look at that. Oh, it's rust. That's what did it. Oh, yeah. The pinion, the pinion on the top pinion here. Corrosion, rust, ate away part of that pinion. Okay, there we go. Now we know. That's what happened. Yeah, part of that pinion's missing. Because it's right underneath the, the winding assembly, right underneath all this stuff. It got caught up. The same stuff. That's what happened. I don't see any corrosion on this bushing. Oh, let me clean it up. See what I'm looking at. Okay, you ready? Ready for the big reveal? Um, come on. Oh, we got us some S2. I was kind of wondering if the barrel would have been popped open, but no, it's still firmly closed. Because I don't know what would be pushing that thing up. That's, that is unusual. I 
Okay. Oh, I see. Wow, that's so sticky that it pulled the arbor out. Huh, I wonder why. Uh, this looks real typical. Correct amount of S. That's what I'd expect to see, and it looks pretty clean. Yeah, it's not bad. No, it looks okay. Hmm. No, that looks okay. So that's all going to have to get cleaned up here. Just a second. I will do that. All this stuff goes into the clean me pile. Now, let's get that uh, center wheel. Oh, right. That's the next step. That looks pretty good. That's nice. That looks pretty okay to me. <laughs> There's actually a... No, it's just grease. It's not actually liquid. It only looks like it. Okay. Let's pull that calendar apart. Darn it. Come on. Ugh. See, this is why actually I like using the uh, the movement ring as a as a, a secondary holder because it supports everything and keeps it all together. Uh, my goodness gracious! Okay. Pretty. So new. Yeah, you can see it's all blown out. Lower mainspring arbor board. Arbor board. So we know. Would you stop swinging around? Stop it. Stop it. Yeah, you can see it's ovaled out. It's not the clearest thing for you, but it's all work out to that side. All burned out. Okay, well, let's get back to the thing. I'll sing some Conway Twitty. How about that? That'd make me happy. I'm from the West. Legitimately can think about that. Hang on a second, please. How about that? Yeah, gosh, look at this, though. I mean, it looks darn well, darn near new. Except, of course, for that 
Lower Main Spring Arbor Port. Nice. I always loved, one of my favorite things about the 6309s is they have this satin finish aluminum versus like anything kind of really reflective. It just means that it just, you can read it in every direction. I'm a big fan. And they, of course, did change that for the 7002s. Wish they didn't, but, you know, nobody asked me. No, no rust there. I think we got a little, maybe just a little. I'll clean that up. clean. Lots of grease and a little bit of rust. And that looks okay. I'm going to have to hand clean that. And of course, our last two things to do. Okay, that looks that looks clean. I'm good. I gotta clean that up. Okay, and then we go just boink, and out that comes. It's dirty, but nothing major. That's fine. The last bit of fun. Are you ready? Oh boy, everybody, everybody loves this. I know I do. So our 6309 stems are made up of five parts, inner female stem, outer male crown post, spring, washer, gasket, and crown. Easiest way to do that is you just kind of hold it like this and you just very gently just turn that sideways, making sure that you're on that slot and it just comes right out and then you slowly make sure you don't have any pent up energy. And then you can get this. That's the thing. It always ends up getting lost. Stem rest washer. That's nice. Mm -hmm. Yep. Spring looks fine. No rust in there. Now, the last thing I'm going to do is to get the, pardon me, the crown out, the crown post out. And uh, I, it's, uh, you have, this is one of these things that you absolutely have to, you can't just try to unscrew this because they're, they're, they're glued together. Seiko uses an adhesive and they also firmed them down pretty hard. So you've got to, You've got to use fire and you got to, or something equivalent, you got to heat up that crown on the outside to get the, the to get the, the threading to loosen up when the crown expands. And you just test it. Come on, boy, it doesn't want to go. It doesn't want to go. Man, I can feel it. You can feel it so carefully. You can feel it that, that, that when I was twisting and I could feel that it was in the, 
the post, the post was twisting and the base was holding. Gotta get that. Come on, baby. Let go. Holy cow. Wow. You gotta let go, man. Stop holding on to the past. Okay, so if this doesn't do it, I'm letting the heat sort of soak up here. Um, I'm going to have to get creative. Ow, mother. God bless it. That's really, really... Okay, let me look at this. Okay, I just had to give it a real good bit of heat. And I got it to crack off. But boy, that is amazing that it fought me that hard. Um, in the past... When I've had crowns that took this much work to unscrew, um, I've more than a few times, even with all the heat I've used, I've when I've tried to reuse these crown posts out of things like that, snap off the, the thread. I've seen it happen more than a few times. So I personally would strongly recommend, because if that thing snaps off inside the crown, crown is bad and the crown post is bad. I would have us replace this because these can look good and then they give way and then you're done. So that's what I'm gonna do because that'll help us preserve your crown. Because that is much more important. And then of course we got going on in here. Let's get that little gasket out of there. Come on. Come on. I mean, come on. Huh, it's not too compressed. That's amazing. Look at that. It's still even squishy. I think this one sat in a dark drawer for a long time. No oxygen around. Wow, that's awesome. That's kind of crazy. I mean, it's flattened. But it probably would have held up. <laughs> Nutty. Okay. So that is the end of that story. And we are going to go from there. Okay, it's a part I've got to, i got to hand clean all this stuff. I've got to hand clean inside the crown. I've got to hand clean all this stuff. And then I'm going to jewel. I'm also going to jewel your um, your upper mainspring arbor bushing. I'm, that's going to become a jewel. Uh, and then I'm going to go through and clean it and we'll go from there. All right, cool. Uh, when I come back, we are, this will have been assembled. Okay, out of the cleaner. So I'm just checking out how, how, the, how the different things are functioning. You got your upper and your lower mainspring arbor jewels in place, and we can see that the, the whole barrel turns beautifully. I mean, that's, I mean, that's exactly what you want. You don't want to make the watch have any harder time uh, winding than it needs to. Okay, so there's that, which is good. Um, I have also found, uh, I have a new um, uh, fourth wheel for you, which uh, is awesome. Um, so that's, that's good, the other wheels are good. I'm gonna start dropping things together to start building this. The only bad, darn it, I'm so sorry, the only, the only actual bad part I found so far was actually was one of the uh, was one of the jewels, one of the cap jewels in your die fix setting uh, was chipped on the edge, so I had to replace that. Um, but that's it so far. I'm gonna keep pushing, and yeah, cool. Yeah, that's your old that's your old bad one there. So it's it's definitely stumpy. Okay, let me get this together. 90, it's a lot together. Um, we wound up in power. Uh, everything, the train is spinning smoothly. Everything looks good so far, so let us see. Cannon pinion was bad, by the way. So that's another thing. Remember I was talking about that? Come on. Hey, she's ticking over. So I got at least something right so far. 
Gosh darn it. There. There we go. Okay, she's running. Let me demag it and look at the numbers. Okay. Now let's let us see. Let's see what we got. Got some beat error, but it's straight. Ooh, 216 to start out. 217. All right, cool. I'm going to get rid of that beat error. I'm, I'm going to adjust this. I can't do it. I have to be right on top of it. So you're going to see these numbers move, and I'll tell you what I'm doing. This is going to be in front of me. I am doing that now. 224. All right, so first things first is I gotta get rid of that B error. So I am going to adjust the, the stud carrier thingy. Let me get rid of that B error. I am gonna try to, I'm just gonna move it one way a little bit and see what kind of change I get. Uh, that makes it a little better, didn't it? Yep, okay, so I am again moving that stud, I'm moving it clockwise to correct beat error. It, this is effectively shortening the hairspring, which will make the watch run more quickly. I'm gonna do it again. I like to get it to, I like to get it to zero beat error if I possibly can, but that is, it's running way too, I, I'll just get this. I'm now adjusting the accuracy to drop it. Okay, get a little tighter now on that B air. Come on. Yes, I don't need to move it some more. Come on. Come on. There we go. Move the just a hair. <gasps> I think I got us to zero beat error. Now it's going too fast, so I'm gonna bring that back down. much okay again I'm gonna give it a little bit more that's good enough for now okay I want to let this I want to let this thing run in. I got some other stuff I need to do. I'm going to put this to one side, and uh, I really just want to let this in. It's not uh, the end of the day, so if I keep getting good numbers out of this, I'll case it and then let it run overnight that way. But these are very good numbers, initial numbers for this. All right, I'm gonna let it sit and we'll come back. I gotta do other stuff and I'll case this and, and we'll look at that number and we'll go from there. Okay, I have to dial on now. Uh, it's, uh, it's been a while. It's chugging along, gotta dial up now. Yeah, I am. Pretty okay with those for initial numbers. I think we're gonna be fine. We should be just fine. Yeah, I think we're gonna be just fine. Let me case, let's let's case this thing up and get these things back to you. You've waited long enough. I'm gonna get it cased and we'll go from there. Um, I will, when it's done running in and I'm, 
I'm sure that I'm happy with it, then we will, uh, I'll make your final video and I'll finish this video and then we'll be golden going from there. Wow, I'm just sitting here just looking at the numbers. <laughs> I think this thing is going to end up running in the 240s or the 250s. Maybe even better, who knows. Yeah, real good place to start. I'm just curious to see how this next push goes. is you're going to see the numbers go wee 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 as everything works around it's you're going to see the numbers rise yep there we go yep cool and that's going to keep happening uh we, this thing could easily cruise in the in the 240s 250s no problem okay okay i am closing in on being done uh, a couple things. The corrosion and pitting inside your crystal retaining ring bezel here, uh, it was it was it was pretty gnarly. Um, and as I suspected, uh, it has actually begun to fracture the crystal retaining ring, uh, which means it's not it's basically bad. It's not fully bad yet, but it's fully bad. You can see. Where is it? Right there. Right there, that's a crack. That's a crack. And this thing is just gonna give way one of these days. It's already cracked all the way through here and it's running into this circumference. So I'm sorry, it, it looks beautiful, but it's bad. The rust was also enough that it, uh, it actually impacted, this crystal is clean. This stuff, it like impacted and sort of put, somehow like shattered away some of the surface and pushed in this corrosion. So I'm gonna give you, I'm gonna get you a new crystal, which is already in there. And I've got that, look at that, huh? New old stock for a really nice watch. So that's what I'm gonna have to do, you know? Moral of the story is if you take your ocean, your watch into the ocean, make sure you rinse it. Okay, let me put it together. Okay, so here we are. It's all done. Nice and secure. All clean. All fixed. Good to go. It's a really nice watch. Really, really nice watch. It's a nice piece. Silky smooth turning. Uh, everything was pretty well. The only other thing I think I didn't tell you, your crown tube threads are ever so slightly worn. Uh, somebody didn't quite cross thread them, but the tops are kind of flattened down. It, abs it still does screw down nicely. This is just one of these things, and I'm sure you know this, but I like telling it anyway. With slightly worn threads on either side, the way you want to deal with this is you want to make sure the threads are meshing. Uh, and again, I apologize if you already know this. So when I need to screw in a crown, I push it in and I slowly turn it backwards until I feel the click. There's the click. And then when I feel the click, I start turning forwards and send it home. That's the way we do it. Um, uh, the only thing, here are all of your bad parts. Only one I forgot to put in here is your upper mainspring arbor um, bushing. Uh, now I will put that in here for you and you can play with all those things and look at them and they're super cool. And uh, I'll package up everything and we'll get it going. Scott, again, I thank you, thank you, thank you so much for sending in your watches and your patience. I, I, I simply cannot thank you enough. All right, thank you.